friends and welcome or welcome back. I'm Shannon Makes, creative fabric repurposer by day, circus artist by night. And today's project is inspired by this little guy. It's just over a yard of 100% linen that I found in the remnant bin at my favorite fabric store. And if you've been on the channel a while, you know the one. I gave y'all a tour of it last summer, complete with sassy Google reviews and all. The shelving is lumberyard quality, so you probably don't have to worry about dying in a fabric avalanche. Plus, it was only $5, so naturally I had to grab it even if I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with it. But today, I have a game plan, and that is to make a no-waste, cottagecore-inspired apron. Now, I did already do a quick Google search for zero-waste apron patterns, and there were a couple, but they were all very utilitarian, cooking in the kitchen, or standing in front of the barbecue style, and I'm going more for skipping through the underbrush, harvesting mushrooms to hang from my rafters sort of a vibe, so it looks like it's going to be up to me to design my own pattern for this. Here are some of the images I'm using for inspiration, although obviously I'm going to be limited somewhat by the specific shapes and dimensions I can squeeze out of my particular piece of fabric. And this is my first time trying to make a zero waste pattern, so I'm not exactly an expert, but it felt like a pretty natural first step to measure the fabric and get the exact dimensions first. From there, I basically just went to the computer and played around with some of the basic apron shapes in various dimensions, trying to get the essentials down. I like using the computer because it allowed me to quickly and easily move the pieces around or modify their dimensions to find the most efficient use of my fabric, but you could equally do this step with paper and pencil, just maybe make sure it has an eraser. The most vital piece, and also the trickiest one, was probably the torso section, which I ended up giving it this angled design, both because I liked the way it looked, I feel it looked a bit more flattering, but also because I thought I might be able to use these leftover triangular sections here as a sort of over-the-shoulder frill that you see in a lot of these more cottagecore-inspired designs. So I think I have a pattern that I'm happy with. It should theoretically fit me, and it's got the look and the style that I'm going for. And if you want the exact dimensions that I'm using for this, I'll have a PDF of it up in my coffee store so you can follow along and make your own zero waste apron. Although at the moment it looks like it's only about 98% zero waste, I do have this one little chunk right in here that I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it, but I figure I'm just going to get started and see if inspiration strikes partway through the process. All right, our pieces are all cut out and we've got our main skirt piece. We've got our four shoulder strips, one long waistband strip, the whole uh, torso situation, so the two bodice pieces, two pockets, and then a couple triangular shoulder frills. Then we've got one long ruffle band as well as a couple extensions. And let's not forget our little bonus extra piece. But it wouldn't be a Shannon Makes project without at least one little hiccup right, so let's talk about it. So when I measured the fabric to get those initial dimensions, I forgot to check if it was cut on grain. And of course, being a remnant, it absolutely wasn't. I mean, linen is super tricky to cut on grain. It's very wibbly, so I can't even be mad. But that does mean that my main long ruffle strip tapers from being seven inches on this end to right about here, very rapidly tapering down to five inches at the other end. And while I could use our little extra mystery bit to patch that in, it 
feels a little bit like cheating because I'd like you all at home to be able to replicate this pattern and yet I don't expect any of you to find yourself in this specific exact predicament. Fortunately, while the Crooked Cut meant that I was short on fabric in this corner, it did mean that I had a little strip of extra fabric in that corner. So I think I'm going to take that extra strip and I think it's going to be just big enough to patch onto the ruffle and make it the right size. Then once that's done, I'll start in on the construction by joining all of the ruffle pieces into one long strip, which I'll do with French seams, and then I'll hem the bottom edge and run a couple lines of gathering stitches along the top edge. Alright, here's my ruffle all in one piece and ready to attach to the main skirt panel, but I figured I should maybe sew the pockets on here first while this is all nice and flat and easy to manipulate. So I went ahead and prepped my pockets as well. The edges are all ironed under, the top is folded under and stitched down, and now I just need to figure out what the best placement is for them on this main panel. I'm just trying to estimate how much I want to gather this skirt down and where that means the pockets should go. And it's proving to be a little bit interesting because, you know, these things, they always look a bit different on paper than in the real world. And I'm kind of finding out that this panel might actually be a bit too wide and that I don't actually want it all gathered down this much. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, further investigation incoming. <laughs> Like, it looks okay when it's this gathered, but then there's almost no point in having pockets on it because the pocket is going to be so bunched up that it kind of defeats the purpose. So, we're problem solving. We're problem solving. Okay, so change of plans because after playing with it more, it just really felt like gathering it down was going to be way too bulky. So I have switched gears and instead I am trying to pleat everything down. I did take a tape measure and measure how far I want the skirt portion of the apron to extend on the waistband and came up with about 25 inches. My skirt panel is 50 inches wide, so that basically means that I need to gather it down to half of its original width. So I've got my handy dandy pleating tool and I'm just going through and gonna pleat this all up, pin it down, try it back on, see if that gives more of the look that I'm going for. I definitely think that's a better look than I'm going for, but I take it back. I am going to wait and sew the pockets on until the rest of the apron is assembled. Yes, it will be slightly more annoying, but I think it will probably just give a better result in terms of the placement of the pockets because I want to make sure that, you know, they're at the right height with regards to where the skirt is sitting and where the waistband is, and that's going to be determined by the torso piece. So... Ooh, pockets are gonna come later. It's really starting to look like something and I can already tell it's gonna be super cute. But this whole gathers versus pleats versus pocket placement situation made me realize it would probably behoove me to pause for a second and actually write down the order of the remaining steps. Up until this point, I've just been wigging it. These seemed like very logical first steps, but as we start to get into the waistband, the torso, the shoulder straps, it feels like the order of operations could become significantly more important and taking five minutes to sit down and mentally walk through the assembly process now could potentially save me hours and hours of missteps and picking stitches down the road. So that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it outside because it is 
flippin' gorgeous out. Finally. have my plan of action going forward and I think it was probably very helpful because even as I was visualizing the assembly and writing it out, I definitely overlooked a couple things and ended up going back and adding some steps, rearranging the order, so yeah, I probably saved myself some time and hassle right there. I also spent the evening finishing off the edges of this piece. They're all just folded under twice and stitched down by hand, except for the ruffle, which Honestly, it was such an unravely mess that I ended up giving in and serging it. Uh, my original plan was to use a very fun historical technique called a receiving tuck, but that technique eats up a bit more fabric and this panel was already a bit on the short side. So I do know that I'll be doing a pair of turn of the century combinations really soon and I'll be sure to use that technique there. So if you're interested, make sure you're subscribed. I think it's a nice clean technique and very historically accurate. So looking at my list, the next step is going to be joining the shoulder straps to the bodice and then sewing the front and the back of the bodice together. First, the shoulder extensions were attached to the shoulder portion of the bodice, creating one long strap that would reach from the front around to the back and eventually button onto the waistband. This was done on both the inside and outside layers of the bodice for a total of four seams to be pinned, stitched, and ironed. Then the inside and outside layers could be joined, sewing them right sides together, or, well, almost, because actually the shoulder frills need to be sewn in now, which meant first they had to be hemmed, so it was back outside for another sunny weather stitching session. So up until this point, and for the rest of the apron, actually, this project is very beginner friendly because it's all squares and rectangles and everything is cut on grain and can be done either by machine or by hand. But I will say that this part is a little bit of a pain. It's a bit tricky because the part of the frill that needs to be hemmed is the edge that's cut on the bias, which is the stretchiest part of the fabric. And if you're newer to sewing, it can feel a little bit like that fabric wants to get away from you. So I definitely recommend making sure you're well fed and watered before starting in and using the iron to help you fold those raw edges under twice before stitching them down. And I prefer to stitch them down by hand just because I feel like it gives me a bit more control over the fabric, but if you prefer to use the machine, that is equally possible. Just take your time, go slowly, and make sure you have a good tension and everything should be just fine. Once the frill was hemmed, it could be gathered down and centered on the shoulder strap, and to accurately figure out where the actual center should be, I quickly tried it on, using the waistband strip to help place the bodice accurately, and then marking that topmost point of my shoulder, which would correspond with the widest part of the frill. Then I could gather the frill down and carefully pin it onto the inside of the shoulder strap. In order for the frill to be visible from the inside, I had to carefully sandwich it into the middle of the strap. So it's like the straps are the bread and the frill is your delicious sandwich filling of choice. And folks, here's a friendly reminder to clean your sewing machines frequently and before they jam up. This little detour was what I'll call a character building experience and it actually took me a couple sessions to get it back up and working. I got frustrated enough with the whole thing that I had to get up and go for a little walk to give myself a break. So instead of watching me work myself into a frenzy, let's talk about the inspiration behind this project. 
Lately, I've been trying to brainstorm some creative uses for smaller chunks of yardage, in part because I often find smaller pieces of fabric and it's a fun challenge to try and make cool things with them, but also because I'm already doing the planning for my holiday fabric bundles. Now, if you follow me over on Instagram, you may have seen some of my posts already about these bundles because I was asking for everybody's thoughts and inputs on them. I'm super excited about the idea. They're going to be these themed bundles of fabric and useful notions curated by yours truly and distributed for the winter holidays. And I wanted to be able to include some smaller pieces of fabric, you know, remnants of a yard and a half, two yards, because sometimes I find really great deals just like this one on small pieces of wool or linen, and I really want to be able to include them in the fabric bundles, but I'd also love to give people tangible ideas of what to do with them. And I figured even if you're not interested in the bundles for yourself, I feel like everybody has those odd small bits of fabric laying around, whether it's left over from a project that you maybe overestimated yardage on, or you found a small bit at a thrift store. I don't know. I like using up small bits. Many of you guys seem to too. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Also, if you have any great ideas for projects that use minimal yardage, be sure and throw them in the comments below. I'd love to see everyone's ideas and maybe turn them into a video one day. Guys, yesterday was so long. There were quite a few struggles, mostly with my machine, but I'm happy to say that it was all worth it because the torso is looking super cute. I was a little bit worried that the ruffles might be a bit too narrow and look disproportionate, but actually I really like them. It's a really well-balanced look in my opinion. So today's goal is going to be to finish up the main construction, which is basically just using the waistband to join the torso with the skirt. And if that goes well, I'll slap on those pockets, add some buttonholes, and Bob's your uncle. Also, I think I finally figured out what to do with that little extra bit of fabric, but it's gonna remain a fun little surprise, so you're gonna have to stay tuned till the end to see what it's gonna be. With the front and sides of the waistband stitched on the machine, I decided to finish the last section by hand because this linen was truly a joy to hand sew and because I didn't want to top stitch the whole waistband. Then I put the apron on one last time to mark where the buttonhole should be, very carefully removed the whole apron, and then used those pins to locate the placement for the buttons and holes. This thrifted jar of mismatched white buttons had two perfect buttons for the job, two buttonholes were sewn to match, and the apron was done. All right, the apron is done, and it's way way cuter than I had anticipated. I love how it turned out and I'm honestly really proud of my design. I feel like sometimes zero waste designs can be a bit odd or look a bit forced and they can really scream, I'm zero waste, which is fine, but I kind of love that this legit just looks like a normal, extremely cute cottagecore apron. I do have a PDF with the diagram and dimensions for this apron along with some assembly tips up on my coffee store or if you're already a monthly supporter, you should have access to it as a free bonus. 
It's not unfortunately one size fits all. It's definitely a bit flexible and it's gonna fit a much wider range of bodies than a more fitted garment, but it's still only gonna work for a portion of human bodies out there. I have included a suggested diagram of how to make a larger version, but I haven't made it up myself. Although I would love for somebody out there to take this design and test it out, tweak it, maybe improve on it for a larger version. And if you do so, please tag me because I would love to see it. Additionally, this apron, the one you've been seeing me make for the past, what, 20 minutes or so, is also available on my coffee store. I love it, but I also have a tiny apartment with a tiny closet, so I'd much rather this goes to somebody who wants it and who will wear it and who has space for it. So go check that out if you're interested. If you're enjoying the content and you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon where you can get early access to videos, bonus monthly vlogs, and occasional freebies like this pattern. My patrons are literally helping to make each and every of these videos possible, so thank you so much. I am eternally grateful. We're going to cut to the final reveal now, but if you want to see what I did with that little extra bit of fabric, stick around to the end. I'll be back in a little bonus section to talk about what I did with it. As you probably saw, the bonus fabric was used to add some pin tucks to the front, mainly inspired by this image. I just marked off where I wanted the tucks to fall, then finger pressed the fabric into position, which works really well on linen. Then I had to unpick a small portion of the top neckline in order to insert this strip of fabric, but if you make your own version, I would recommend just sewing it in place at the same time as you sew the front and back pieces together. It'll be faster and much easier. Then I pinned the front down and carefully sewed the pin tucks in place, passing through all the layers of the bodice section at the same time. Then I added some cute little buttons from my stash going down the front purely for aesthetics, and the only thing I would change if I could go back is I think I'd put my stitching a little bit further from the edge so that each pin tuck looked a little bit larger. Oh, and I'd also stitch both buttonholes on the shoulder strap going vertically. As it was, I stitched the first one horizontally, then realized that puts a bit more stress than necessary on the buttonhole, and did the second one going vertically, which was much nicer. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye!